It has already broken records, and not a soul has seen the show. Cracker, a new series, explores what happens when a white supremacist is thrust into a world where the oppressed have white skin. We are here with Dale Restagini, who is the director of said show. How are you doing today? Good, good, brother. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. Good, good to have you, man. Um, we debuted the trailer for Cracker on allhiphop.com, and it went through the roof immediately. So I have to ask you, before we get into all the detailed questions, what has been the feedback so far? It's, it's been explosive. Uh, I created it to have people see racism through a new lens um, as an artistic, you know, a freedom choice as a, as a filmmaker. And um, like any artist can write and produce whatever they want. It's, it's a moment that I felt was needed. Uh, and yeah, it's, I, I've got a tremendous amount of support from the community uh most of the pushback has been mostly from white people who suffer from their white blindness uh and i don't mean that negatively just they're just they just didn't get it but for the most part um it's been phenomenal and uh and it was meant to spark conversation which obviously has been taking place not just here in america but all over the world mm -hmm. what have been some of the specifics on the pushbacks like what has uh, you know it, like what specifically are people saying uh, I, I, I'd, I'd be happy to send you some of my, uh, some of my hate mail from mostly white people basically saying it's inappropriate for me to show black people in power. Um, how dare I, um, put white people on blast. Uh, it's, it's all about their fear of seeing the balance of power shift in, in a, in a, in a movie in something that. I created, you know, a portal to get to a new world using science fiction as a Trojan horse, just like any other sci-fi show out there. Um, but obviously this is a trigger for people who have some deep-rooted fear and issues when it comes to racism in their black friends or their black family members. Uh, my first thoughts were, I was almost confused. I was like, is this, is this good? Is this bad? Do, would black people even do that? Because you, you have some serious depictions in there um, of, you know, beating, rape. I mean, it's very triggering, I guess you could say. What made you take that approach? It's almost like, complete. you know, it, there are cultural nuances that, that I think exist. Do you, do you think it, do you think this is even possible in a, even in an alternate reality, even in science fiction? Obviously, anything's possible, but um, the artistic and the creative side with my writers who are also black, my producers are black uh, and white um, and brown. Um, that that's that's where I just that's where this should be focused on, and and come on coming up with various possibilities of um, of what can happen. But it's more about Hollywood always pushing out the stories that people have seen. Roots, Twelve Years a Slave. They're okay showing white people. Uh, they're they're okay showing black people get brutalized and degraded and and enslaved. But the second, the second they see a relatively tame ninety seconds of a white, there's no nudity. There's none. But yeah. people are flipping out. It, it mm -hmm. blew my mind. Think about that. Yeah. They're okay. S continually just driving it home. Blacks are enslaved. Now they're minorities. We're the ruling power. The second they see 90 seconds, look, look what 90 seconds of just a few seconds to depict something brutal, but there's no blood. There's no nudity. Look, look, think about that. And people have lost their mind, literally gone bonkers on the white side. Yeah. By and large, um, by and large, uh, all of my friends in the community of, of hip hop and in and, and, and Hollywood, they support it 100%. Um, and they know where I'm coming from because most people know me in, 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 in the space. So they know I'm a good person. They know where I come from. So they know there's no ulterior motive. Um, yeah. Most know that my, but that, my, um, that my amazing wife for 25 years, uh, uh, her brother in 1981 and going to FDU in New Jersey, 
was uh, was attacked and then uh, beat up and then thrown over a bridge and killed by three mm. men who never even got charged by the FBI and by the police. So like this is not just for um, people like her, but even during the Floyd protest, there were many other mothers and sisters and brothers that would come out and that were talking to reporters telling them their story about their loved one who was killed by cops or, or whites that never got justice. So nothing has worked up until summer 2020. No, no kumbaya song, no movie, no miniseries, no preaching. Nothing has worked. Yeah. Nothing. So how dare anybody criticize somebody trying to show it, show it through a new lens? Maybe this can make people, and, and it has. A lot of my comments were like, you know what? This can be wow. And this can make me and them see something different that they never thought about before. Um, yeah, so I, I call it white blindness. I, I, would, I would normally use the word ignorance, but ignorance seems to be sort of a, a, a provoking word. But people mm -hmm. can be blind and not know it. And that's pretty much what I feel the bulk of white people that don't get it have. They just don't understand. Yeah. What made you go with crack uh, at, with an A as opposed to ER? Was that a play on the N-word or what, what made you go that route? So in a different lifetime, in the late 80s, I was down in Orlando County Jail in Florida, and I was playing uh, spades for push-ups, and I beat this brother, and he was mad, and he called me a crack from the pit of his stomach. And that worked out with me all these years. I, I never knew all these years later it would be a part of my creative endeavors. Um, but when I came up with the idea of doing this as a way to help educate people or at least let people see racism through new lens, I was going to try to be cute with the title and call it like, like the enslaved or um, the endangered, you know, the endangered species. But I said to myself, no, this isn't a, this isn't a soft tip subject. This is a, this is really hard hitting and it's brutal and it's mean. And it just needs to be people need to be cracked over the head. And so with a title like Cracker, it just it just made total sense. And, and everybody I spoke to, you know, in the business, they like they got it like, yeah, that, that really is the title. And. There's female black executives that I've been talking to and I've been working with, and they said, no, do not change that title. That, yeah, that is the title. So, um, yeah, so my gut was right on that. And uh, I, listen, if people are offended by it, especially white people if they're offended by it, I think it speaks to their insecurities and their own personal fears. Uh, they're okay still watching black people get brutalized and raped on film or in TV series. Why? Well, and why suddenly when they see a very tame version of that, they flip out. It doesn't make any sense. And so while it's aggressive, uh, it certainly has proved its point that there certainly is a conversation to be had. And you know, whether it's this younger generation that's ultimately going to, you know, be the generation that creates change, or you know, hopefully this, you know, these 30s and 40s and 50 year olds that are here now that still have um you know, a lot of saying what happens in the world can open up their eyes and say, you know what, I, I have not, I have not been fair in my relationship to racism. I have not been fair to the black people in my life. Uh, they're okay liking a picture with a black friend with a cat, but they're not okay liking a post about, you know, BLM. And, and why is that? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of confusion. This world, this country is broken. And, um, you know, you can blame who's in office, you can blame, you can blame whoever you want, but it's been around for a long time and it just needs to be fixed. And hopefully Cracker can um, help people just see it through a new lens. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I can go on and on about how passionate I am about it, but I mean, ask me some questions, get right into it. <laughs> yeah, no problem. No, the, the title definitely yanks you in. Um, you almost have no choice but to explore what you're presenting. Um, I have to ask you, what was the inspiration um, for this? Uh, it's very, it's, there have been some themes in the past that have had similar sort of themes, but uh, this is it's a little bit different. Um, I actually was working, about three years ago, I was working on a biopic of uh, the runaway slave named Crispus Attucks. And I actually know it very well because he's actually from my hometown in Framingham, Massachusetts. Um, Charlottesville happened. And it wasn't 
the act of Charlottesville and the and the conversation of whether well, there was, you know, good people on both sides. It was literally the days following where I would see, I felt a seismic shift in social media, an emboldenment of, of the white supremacist side. They were posting more black deaths. It, it, I was like, wow, what is going on? How can we be in 2017? And people think this is okay. I literally had a kid I played hockey with um, at nine years old, who I haven't spoken to in 30 something years, who went on to have a regular job and was never, was probably late to adapt to a smartphone and social media. You know, the, the world is filled with those kinds of people. And I suddenly see this kid, or now man, who's got kids posting a meme that has a Muslim getting effed by a donkey. And I'm like, mm. what don't you understand? Why would you even do that? And then another friend who I played baseball with, I think in, in high school, posting, reposting that video of the unarmed black man, forget his name, getting shot by a cop and saying, oh, you probably deserve it. I'm like, what don't people get? It's, it's like the Floyds and the mods, like over and over and over, and they don't get it. I'm like, what would make them understand that this is mm. not right? And then I said, it was, it was the, okay, what if it was their daughter or son or mother being subjected to what they what 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 blacks went through and the, the only way to show that is is how i did it you can't yeah. be you can't you can't make change and keep asking for it and and by no means and and, and this is the fine line because uh again most of my my black friends and most of the black who don't know me support it there's tiktoks going up all over the place but there are some that come really militant towards me who are you trying to take slavery no it's not, that's not it. With all due respect, I created this so white people can understand how stupid and ignorant they've been towards blacks, at least in the time I've been on this planet. And I, it happened and it was going on even before I got here. So it's not about me trying to do anything but just do that. Okay. Uh, you mentioned uh, some, some of your uh, African-American friends. What's the, been the response from the, Af you know, the black community? Uh, no, by and large, just by and large, it's been great. There's, yeah. um, you know, we have extreme right and we have extreme left. We have extreme whites, extreme blacks. Uh, and I, I, you know, been involved with enough black women in my life to to have, you know, heard, you know, have many comments uh, thrown at me from militants who just, who are you, white man? You know, my black sister, yeah. all, all that kind of. So, same thing with the crackers hitting me up. The supremacists hitting me up on my um my social media saying we're going to come to your house here's your address we're going to come burn you and lynch you and so we have those factions on both sides so um but that's life and if you if you're going to make a statement if you want to create change you know you're going to get it from from somebody uh so by and large the black community has supported me but there have been some who have approached me to say you don't deserve to do this and i'm like no 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 my life and people and the black people in my life what i've been through I'm an artist, I get to do what I want as an artist. I don't rap, I don't rock, I don't paint, but I, I filmmake. Mm -hmm. So as my wife calls me a disruptive filmmaker, I'm entitled to create my art based on my experiences. And, and I have done this because I'm sick and tired of, of having to have conversations with white people who tell me to my face that racism doesn't exist. They literally say, there's no racism. Well, look, look what the 90 second trailer has done. Proved it. Proved your point. Do you think a black person could get this done in Hollywood? Do you think uh, if if someone else was doing this with with brown skin, well, this it, would be? it's interesting you say that because it, when I first when I first shot it, um, and my, my black producer who was with me out in New Jersey when we shot it uh, came back here, she was shown to all her powerful black friends in Hollywood, and. People like, yo, you're either crazy or you're genius or you're both. But people, people, especially in the storytelling side of things, they get why this was done. It's not just somebody sitting on a sofa that has a regular job um, who are, you know, doing what they need to do, suddenly seeing something. Who is this? What? Who the hell? Like, it's, it's, it's the people that get it, get it. And they were like, what you need to do is this. What you need to do is have a Black co-creator. And I, I can list, you can probably just... Mm. 
five names of the top people, and those are the names that people are saying you should have this person, this person, this person. And at first, it, it shook me because I'm like, you know what? It, it's not. I, in hindsight, I completely understand that thought process. And then some have told me, no, this is your story. This is this is your vision, and 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 um, just 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 keep it you. But like. Whether I have like my co-writer on this is black, I've been talking to other black writers once this actually goes, goes to, to the next level. Um, you know, I, I've always been surrounded mostly by a lot of black and browns on my sets and in my life. So, um, and again, this town knows it, meaning Hollywood. So um, I'm not just some, some white guy out of nowhere who said, I'm gonna go make a racially driven movie and I'm gonna go start some shit. Like that's yeah. not what this is. This is all about creating a chance for white people, and obviously blacks have to partake. But again, it, it, I, I never intended to offend anybody who is black. And for the for the few that have reached out to me, uh, either in a very negative way or even in a very polite way, once I explain myself, the ones with rational minds understand why I'm doing it. And I've had the support of like the mothers of the movement. I've got a PR rep named Nadi who represents the Central Park Five. They seem they're like you know we 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 applaud him for doing this. So um, you know, and I got uh, there's a woman named Parker Dellums whose dad Ron Dellums was a 30 year congressman out of the Bay Area for 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, he helped free Mandela. He helped end apartheid. Um, she uh, is also my uh, co executive producer. She actually wrote. The text that you see, you took away, uh, we took away your breath, what if you take away? That was right. So um, there's a lot of information. for me. People just want to jump to conclusions and start firing shots all over the place. But mm. you know, they're, they're, they're a bit in the dark. And, you know, over time, the, the story will get more, you know, will get released and people will have a better understanding. Um, but it's far from the trigger reaction of what uh, is, is what's happened, which has helped, you know, take this global one. You mentioned the mothers of the movement. Uh, I see Sabrina Fulton, the uh, mother of Trayvon Martin, has co-signed it. Um, and she's included in some of the press materials. Um, how was your conversation with her? And you know, so um, by way of her PR rep Nadia um, Fisher, who represents many incarcerated um, uh, men, and Eric Garner's mom, Gwen, um, Gwen Garner. And Sabrina, um, we've uh, we've met via FaceTime when I was shooting a John Legend video, and she and Sab and she and Nadia sent me um, a uh, some some congratulatory text from the George Floyd um, Memorial in Texas, saying, oh, "Listen, we we support what you're doing." Now, um, you know, again, th those those are those are newer people in my life that have got to know me through my work and through. Um, um, very close relationships in the community. So uh, these these people know who I am and know where my heart is. So um, again, and I'm also just even if even if people didn't know me, I'm 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 a director, I'm a writer, and I'm trying to tell a story. Uh, I, I I'm sure Spike Lee. I didn't Spike Lee get a lot of flack when he made um, Malcolm X and he told people to he told kids to stay home from school and go to the movie. Like there's. There's many instances over over life. Uh, I mean, throughout our life, that that we can all point to that had some controversy. And by and large, it's because you know people are trying to evoke some change in the world, and that's simply what this is in this moment. So the people that support me um, will continue to press and get the word out. Uh, and those who, and again, there will be some people that just will never want to buy into something that they don't um, find value in. And if and, and we're in a world where it's either, okay, turn the channel or, or swipe left. Uh, because it obviously isn't for you. Yeah. So how far are you into the creation process? Um, are you are you ready to go or are you still sort of looking for a so, home? Fun? So we have um, we have a 30 minute world, which we uh, backdoor pilot, which is going to be dropped. Uh, and we have our Bible and we have our a Bible is um, a, a description for um, an entire season of uh, of what the show is is meant to be, uh, and we have um, you know all those aspects put together. We're talking to talent right now that want to come on on the team. Uh, uh, there's a lot of rumors out there, female and male actors, um, uh, and then also a lot of music artists want to participate as well. And I was actually really it's 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 fantastic because you find out how aligned some some blacks are with with me as a white guy. Um, in this vision because there's an artist named David Sebastian 
who um, has a song which we spell N-K-K-K-A-L-A-N-D, which you hear in the trailer. And apparently he created that song, but at the same time I had the idea for this movie. And he was trying to reach out to me about a year ago when he, when he kept hearing about this, this show Cracker being done. And we finally found each other. And um, it's been amazing. Like he has also just signed a big deal for himself. Um, and the timing just couldn't be better. He's blowing up, Crack is blowing up. You know, you get cracking, and you're like so. It's like it's it's a, it's a real it's a real good situation, and and even him and his entire team back this and, and back me. So uh, it, it's great when when kindred spirits meet up on the artistic realm and are able to contribute to help invoke change. And and he uh, he he believes it. You know, he believes in it as much as I believe in in, in what he's done. So it's it's and also Avery Wilson, the singer. Uh, who I've worked with the music videos. He has a song called Smoke, which will which will, will play over the the end credits, which yeah. start with 60 of our lost fallen brothers and sisters who fell at the hands of cop violence and white violence. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been it's it's been well thought out, and um, I'm very sensitive to uh, all sides of this. Uh, I, I have to be a little selfish in in in, in my intent of why I, of why I did this. And again, it was to educate white people who are telling me racism doesn't exist. So that for me, for decades, has been a real issue. How, how do you, and I just, I finally just get fed up with it at the hands of Charlottesville. And, and, and that was yeah. it. So, and yeah. I, as anybody has the freedom to do, you can create and say whatever you want. That, that's what we can do. So um, then I started down that road. You briefly mentioned, well, not mentioned, but in the trailer, uh, a Trump 2020 sticker flashes. And you, when you mentioned Charlottesville, um, that was that was definitely a turning point. What, what do you, where do you see Trump in all of this? It, it's an election year. I mean, we literally have. It feels like almost like a race war or or some kind of civil war, um, all, although not as violent. Um, does does he play a factor in this in any way? Well. I mean, without trying to get too much into politics, anybody can scroll through social media and, and see who believes in who and who supports who. I'm gonna say this, uh, Trump, he, he um, rules by division. And ever since he's been in office, it's, he's, 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 um, he's been extremely pro-white. He um, definitely uh, you know, has been negative and condescending to anybody black uh, that's uh, you know, on the democratic side. So. Uh, and who's, you know, his entire administration with the exception of one or one and a half, uh, are all white. So, um, you know, I don't want to get too much into conspiracy theories, but he certainly is not somebody who is supportive of everything that, uh, most of us believe in. Um, there's uh, certainly, a, uh, an agenda to keep things, to keep the status quo, uh, you know, in place. And um, I, it was consciously, of course, because we had to make that bumper sticker up and, and when, we, when we shot the film, the bumper sticker didn't, didn't exist. So that was certainly a conscious um, uh, play. And whether he's reelected or not, uh, it doesn't matter because when he said, when the white supremacists mowed down that, that crowd of people, when he said there's good people on both sides and there's literally white supremacists with, with Nazi symbols and and threatened to kill people on one side. And he said that there's good people on both sides. On the heels of me hearing for decades that there's no racism in this country from white people, it just, it just that was enough. So he certainly plays a part in um, helping stoke the flames of, of, uh, of racism. And we are, without a question, in a race war. Yeah. Um, talk about your cast, one of my... Uh... One of the homies is in there, Saigon. Yeah, Saigon, Saigon, yeah. He's incredible. Um, I've done a, a bunch of videos with him over the years. And um, when he heard that I was doing this show, he, I think he damn me, he's like, yo, Rage, I'll get you down with this. And I'm like, no question, sure enough. And he asked me local, so it, it was perfect. And uh, he, even, it's take, even though it's taken some time to get this out, he's been an advocate for this. He's been talking about it. He's like, oh, I'm part of the most incredible series. And people like Cy and people like David Sebastian and people like Avery. I'm just mentioning that I, I was at Scott Storch's house 
uh, working on some music with an artist and Verse Simmons was there. You know Verse Simmons? He's yeah. A, he's a, mm-hmm. He was there with like eight or nine of his homies and Scott said, yo, yo, play Kraken. And I played the Kraken and, 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 and hands of God, they, they literally, they, all, they, they were looking at it and they were like, yo, this is incredible. Like they get it. They, they, they get it both from a story standpoint, as a, as a creative standpoint, and also why I'm doing it. Again, not everybody's gonna get everything. If that was the case, we wouldn't be in this kind of space. Um, yeah. Everybody didn't have an opinion. Um, but as long as I can start to help shape some minds uh, in, in opinions, uh, that's, that's what this is all about. Yeah, when you, when you look into the deep, uh, the depths of, uh, of slavery, it's, it's brutal. It's, it's far more brutal than, than people realize, most people at least, I should say. Um, how much research did you have to do? Like, where were you looking? So, so I, I don't want to give away where the series go, but um, um, I, I did enough research to know that um, before Columbus was here, that African ships came here. Uh, there's shipbuilders that actually built models of ships to make the trip from Africa to here to know that that was an actual um, event. And I said to myself, I'm gonna. If, I always have to have some sort of reality in anything I do, even if it's completely sci-fi. Just like when um uh the uh um what was that series with the dinosaurs the um um jurassic not jurassic park yeah, yeah, yeah. so 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 uh, okay that that um mosquito and the um sap yeah mm-hmm. that's a real thing they can get they get down like, wow this is incredible we actually make dinosaurs because yeah. so anything that's remotely real yeah, I, I I like to use even if it's sci-fi or a story. So sure enough, I did that research there. And the Queen, uh, I just gave away a little a little uh, a little. Uh, oh. So the Queen is based on an actual Queen who was a warrior Queen who who had um, Amazons who were warriors. Okay. So I don't want to give away where we go with it, but I did a lot of research on this for that aspect of it. But I didn't need any research. Does racism exist in America? Like, yeah, I've been living in it for. You know, a couple of decades now. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, have the uh, cast have they have anybody have they given you feedback like yeah I don't I don't I don't think this should go like this or so so this 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 I I've, I've told this story a thousand times since we filmed this this is okay. amazing to me so I've done about a thousand music videos I've done, I've done a couple of independent films I I I've done so much. But not any project has ever created the sense of of a uh, of, uh, of brotherhood and sisterhood on a set. I literally had the woman that the woman that is in the rape scene and the guy that screams, um, who's her husband in real life. They literally hmm. came to me while we we're filming and thanked me for making it. They were like, "Thank you. We need this in this world." There's three gentlemen who play these um, reapers, the three black guys that are in it. They said. Brother, we thank you so much for making this. The PAs, the mothers, everybody on set was that that were there that I that most who I didn't meet were completely engaged and they loved this entire project. I've never had that happen in anything I've ever done before. Yeah. What's your take on BLM and the uprisings and things? I mean, it's almost like this was divine timing for you this year. Yeah, if, you know, fate and destiny can be a funny thing. And um, when I decided to drop this proof of concept uh, trailer about three months ago uh, at the at the top of the pandemic, because I realized everyone's going to be home and everything shut down, no deals are getting done, probably to 2021. And I had this great piece of content. I'm a filmmaker, I'm a director. You know, my actors did great. I mean, it looks amazing. So I wanted to get it out there. So at the at the top of the pandemic, pandemic, we started that process. Right. And who knew that what was going to happen was going to happen? So people think it's a conspiracy theory. Who's doing it? You know, to create the the the, the, the nut jobs. Um, and uh, what was the question? I'm sorry. No, just you know. Again, there's like there's BLM. There's oh, Trump. Oh, yeah, there's... Yeah. yeah. So um, it's like there needs to be an answer. There needs to be some support for this change. And going, use, going back to um, my wife, Kim, whose brother Jonathan was slayed in 1981 
uh, her family and I have never spoken about it, maybe once or twice in the 25 years I've been with her. And we had a local protest march in Newton, New Jersey, which ironically enough is the most conservative part of New Jersey, and um, which is fine. The people, are, the people are fine. But I was told that on the green where they had this, the, this protest for, um, for Floyd and BLM was a part of it, that the most people that ever been on that green was maybe 60, 70 people for, for any cause. And this green was also used to, back in the day, they used, this same green was where people would come and vote to, to, to ensure slavery didn't end. It's that, it's that part of town. Right. So my, my wife and our artist, Taya, who's um, biracial, um, who, who lives with us, they, they did the march. And she said, listen, Dale, can you stay up here and film us when we come down the road? So I said, sure. So I'm expecting to see 80 people. It was like 600 people with sound. Right. And it was unbelievable, mostly white kids and some brown kids that live there because it's not a big minority population. Right. And um, I literally I literally saw and felt this, this spiritual cleansing coming over her because she finally has the support of this movement that she never had before. So it goes real deep in, in, in that level with so many different people. So um, politics are one thing, you know, I, that's a whole other conversation. But sticking to the topic of Cracker and why it was created, because I was tired of people telling me racism didn't exist when well, we you know it does. And I wanted, to use sci- I wanted to use science fiction as a Trojan horse to create an alternate universe that people see it in a new different way. And when you asked me earlier about, you know, seeing black men raped, I mean, it's literally flipping the world. So you can't have it both ways without, without showing it that way. And it's art. And I'm not the first director, writer, producer to do something provocative. So, um, and while I was in, while I was in the space of creating this, uh, shows like, um, uh, um, on Netflix that deal with uh, Stranger Things and all these other cool shows like Outlander, which is a, which is a science fiction time travel love story take. But so I, I was I was um, in this creative space of, of sci-fi and time travel and and changing the guard of of, uh, of racism. So I was like, yeah, let me just do this and, and 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 do it to the best of my ability with the best team I have. And again, it's people have just saw ninety seconds, and look what it's done. Just ninety seconds. Yeah. Let it jumping off into different conclusions and why and how and who and uh, you know. So I'm I'm glad that at least sparked that controversy and uh, yeah I'll take I'll take the good with the bad any day. And anybody who knows me knows that you know nothing's gonna throw me off my game. Well, just for the record, I'm I'm uh, I'm kind of ready. I'm getting my SAG card any day hey. now. <laughs> yeah, man, it's it's very exciting. I gotta I have to admit. It's, it's exciting and it's it's good to hear you talk about it because you're giving um, more insight and that's very important. Uh, it's good, that, you know. We were like, uh, all right, wait, who, the white guy did this? What? Let me see. What yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, you just you're not sure. You know, you you really aren't sure. You're like, do I like this? And then I had friends who were like, yo, you know. And then I was like, okay, wait, maybe I, I'm not sure. You know, I just didn't know. You know, it's very hard to and it's triggering you know i'll be real it's very like you see someone getting raped you're seeing someone getting raped that's wrong no matter how you slice it how many times have you seen it being done to black women and black men in from hollywood productions right time and time time again and so one of these annoying tests that i would i would do when i would show people i would show just that 90 second trailer people and white women and white men, the second you would see that scene, they would turn away, mm-hmm. like they would cringe. It's not graphic. I mean, and, 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 and thankfully, um, forgive me, the actress, I forget her name right now, she's amazing. She hit me up on, um, on a DM. Um, she said, please scream at me. I'll do whatever it takes. She really wanted to nail the scene and she did. She wasn't afraid at all. And Hakeem and Vishnu and her husband, they like they did an amazing job. And and because they were such good actors, it has that pain without having to see that stuff. And and I'll be honest with you again, I wanted to go harder and more graphic because um there's a, a very well-known executive in music that that is trying to get something done with this project as well, who said to me he's he first saw her from Akon and um 
He's like, yo, you know, you know what crap reminds me of? I'm like, what? He's like, when Mel Gibson was trying to make Passion of Christ. He's like, everybody in Hollywood wanted to do it. They knew they should have made it, but they didn't. So we went and made it independent, and it made a billion dollars. And because that story needed to be told. And what they did with the, with the graphic nature of the thorns in the skull and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff with the body and the nails, I mean, that's what you needed to see. Yeah. And, just reading it, and just reading it, you don't get that, you don't get that, 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 that feeling for what they really went through. So when you see it that way, like, oh, he really suffered. Yeah. So I need to flip it and I think I'm, like, I'm not gonna, it's all or nothing, it's, 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 it's kill or be killed. So I, I'm never that middle guy. I'm never in that, you're never gonna get, get caught in the middle. It's like, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Nice. Now you've, uh, you have a history in music and music videos. Who, who's your favorite artist that you've worked with? Yeah. If, if you have one. That's a big load of question. Oh, should I just say, you know what? I got an easy out. Saigon is like my favorite artist I ever worked with. That was a little, that was a little trick right there. That was, that was the easy route. That was the easy route. I, yeah, I'll yeah, let yeah. you slide on that. I love Saigon. Big yeah, Don, definitely. Pitbull, Snoop, Diddy, Ice Cube, um, Redman, Method Man, RZA, Nicki Minaj, Ty Dolla, uh, Soldier Boy, uh, DJ Drama, DJ Khaled, Ludacris. Yeah. I mean, so many people grow great. A Wiz Kid. Um, um, uh, Kamani Marley, uh, Spraga Benz, uh, Tanya Stevens, um, mm. Isla, uh, I can go on and on and on, but like they're all great. But Saigon is by far my favorite I've ever worked with. Okay, now, now here's my second question on music Do you have a top five dead or alive? Ooh, rappers, that is. You know what? That's a loaded question too, because I might get sliced up for different reasons. <laughs> no Saigon, no Saigon. No, no, no. No. That's cool. If, if, um, if you do, if you do, then, you know, we, we would love to hear it. Okay, so um, Biggie, uh, I got to include the whole Wu-Tang Clan. I just can't say Meth, Meth you know. Um, uh, you know what, we'll, for you, we'll let you include the Wu as a block. Right, 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 right. Top yeah, because I actually do some business with some of them, so it's like, yeah, yeah. So uh, Biggie, Wu, um, uh, Tupac, I have to say, uh, I love Game. I did a video with him okay. in Kiko, okay. and yeah. I have to say, uh, uh, gotta be partial here. I know I take that back. I can't be able to show it. It's, it's been, um, Red Man. Red Man, the way he flows oh. is just phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, oh, people. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Red Man's definitely in my top five. I was just listening to his first album yesterday. I'm I'm not even kidding. And I was I was gonna put a post on Facebook based on that Red Man um time for some action. Like what was the song give a song that literally changed everything for you? And I was like, definitely he, Red Man. It's really interesting because he was actually in my first movie called Colors of Rage, which you know, if people actually do research, they realize, okay, this guy's been on this racial shit for a minute. Yeah. Uh, Colors of Rage about interracial relationship, couple moved from, from Boston to New York City. And uh, actually, Bank Dog, who's one of my favorite producers and friends, um, who works with Jay-Z and, and, and Rick Ross, did, was also in it. Um, it was on that set, he said, yo, man, it's like, yo, when, when, I, when I rhyme, he goes, I don't rhyme to the beat like a lot of rappers, I battle the beat. I said, oh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. We just flipped it like that, because his flow is just really different. And I have to, you know what? I gotta slide in one more because I, I forgot because I, I was caught up in the moment and caught off guard. But Busta. Yeah. Busta, Busta. Is, is ridiculously phenomenal. He's like my big bro. We do a bunch of videos together. He's a pain yeah. in the ass. Like we battle, like we literally scream at each other sometimes. Right. But even then, you know, when we're on the upside or the downside, I got to <laughs> him. He's like, yeah, because he can be like, yo, wait. I'm like, okay, yo, Bust. And we trade punches on set. But he, um, yeah. Phonetically, he just is unbelievable. And he's been yeah. consistent probably longer than any other artist. I mean, I, now that I'm thinking, I can talk about LL Cool J and what he's contributed. And, uh, you know, even go back to, I could flip with like Cool Keith. Remember Cool Keith? Like, of every course. So, like, you know, you call me off. Papa throw. Large, big shot on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah um, I love Cool Keith. I Scarface too, but listen, we go on and on. But then now I'm in that whole, my hip hop flow. I was in my whole, Racial tension. Yeah. Oh, okay. My bad. I didn't mean to throw the throw the curveball at oh, you. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Um, winding down just a bit. Where you know, I visited Boston for the 
first time, Massachusetts, Boston, all, all of that for the very first time for a speaking engagement a couple years ago at Emerson College. Um, I've, I grew up hate to, I grew up hating Boston, you know, the Patriots, the Celtics, uh, the Red Sox. Yeah. All, all of it. Um, not, not so much in the baseball, but you know, um, it just seems like it's something race, some like the, the, the racism there is different. Um, and and that's, that's from not even having been there. Right. Uh, how much, you know, I know you're not from Boston proper, correct? You're, I was born in Boston proper. I grew up in the suburbs. Okay. Um, and whenever I heard that from people, I never really felt that because I grew up in the suburbs. But there, Boston does have an identity and a history of being racist. And I know that some of the, um, like some of the, my favorite um, athletes on in baseball and uh, especially for the Red Sox, like Jim Rice and, and then Ellis Burks later on, they would complain often about racism, but I, I don't ever really remember seeing any fans in stadiums or arenas, you know, being racist. So if it existed, it existed in a way that I, I personally didn't see or, or feel. And I'm the most transparent and honest person out there um, when it comes to especially this subject matter. Uh, but I have heard some athletes complain about it. But then again, you know, you get people like, you know, Papi Atiz and, and um, uh, who is, you know, a, a legend there now for actually helping you know, get back to the World Series. Uh, he's never complained about racism. So um, I, I know it has an issue, uh, or at least has a reputation of having an issue about racism, but I, I can't speak to that specifically because I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Dale, I just want to say thank you for your time. Do you have any final words to give people about Kraken? Uh, you know, listen, it's racism, it, it's heavy, uh, it's here. It has, it's been here for, for 401 years. I don't think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon, but I think it can get better. I think with, with the conversation being started, with the movement that's happening separate, independently of this, with the younger generation who are holding up signs saying, you fuck with the wrong generation, mm -hmm. it's a matter of time before the white supremacists and the KKK are, are gone. Yeah. Now, me just having said that, I guarantee you I'll get a bunch of hate mail in my, uh, in my, in my phone right now, but I don't care. We got your back, man. We got your back. Appreciate sure. it very much, brother. Thank you for having me. Definitely. Thanks a lot. I appreciate your time again. Thank you very much. All right.